I'm Catherine Ward Melber. Um, I'm from Akron, Ohio. And uh, I'm a clinical geneticist. Uh, I was diagnosed with Turner syndrome when I was seven. I remember the endocrinologist, um, going to see the endocrinologist, and, and talking about it, of course, at a very basic level. Uh, my parents were both, my mom's a science teacher, and my dad's a PhD research scientist in the area of um, genetics. So, you know, they did a lot of talking about it, too. It was something that, you know, as I got older, I understood, of course, more. I think, you know, it's an interest that I had from early on, and certainly being, having Turner Syndrome was uh, a big part of, you know, my early interest. Um, it's something I've always uh, enjoyed learning about, and it's a field of, you know, that we're always learning something new. Um, and so I think, you know, bringing the experience of having a genetic disorder to that I have made a point of never being shy about sharing that with colleagues, in particular as an educational piece for them, um, particularly the residents. Um, and I also um, talk to patients about it sometimes, uh, particularly the Turner Center patients. People are always, you know, appreciative when I do tell them and find that interesting. And, I get questions a lot, um, even from other patients, particularly when I'm working them up for things related to short stature. Um, I particularly work in a skeletal dysplasia clinic, which is like the dwarfing conditions, with really short stature. Um, and a lot of times those parents and those uh, patients, the adults, will ask me. And sometimes I give them more specific information, sometimes less. It's, you know, some of those patients really enjoy seeing me over time. Uh, and some is just, a, I think, particularly the new diagnoses. I think that's where it's really important, you know, for me to give the perspective of, you know, certainly there's a big range of what to expect. But I think for those parents, you know, meeting people, I mean, that's what I think is most valuable about this organization. But that I, as the physician that's making the diagnosis, can say this is who I am. You can see a person who's got the disorder. I think that's important. It was never my favorite thing, um, but I got through two semesters of calculus. It took me three semesters to do it, um, but because I made a D in my second semester. But I think where the real tipping point for me, and I think this is probably true just generally, um, in fifth grade was the first time that they divided you know, basically on level math versus the higher level math that was heading towards, you know, al pre-algebra in seventh grade, algebra in eighth grade, and, and so on, really trying to be on the track to at least start calculus in high school. Uh, and uh, my parents, my mom's a teacher, uh, and so, you know, there was, I guess, behind the scenes for me, a lot of discussion about what was going to be appropriate for me. And the decision at the end of fourth grade, even though I wasn't a stellar student, I remember math in fourth grade was one of my first experiences with a C. <laughs> um, but the discussion was to go ahead and put me forward. Um, and I think that challenge at an early age, um, I remember my math teacher that year uh, was a, well, she seemed like an older lady then, she was probably in her 50s. Uh, but, um, she had had polio as a child, and I would tell her, this is hard, and she would say, yes, now do it. <laughs> and I think that really, you know, being aware, and I say this to parents, really being aware of kind of where those tipping points are. And, you know, being aware when, okay, the, the pushing is not, not working, and that it's time to back off at least a little bit, but not to make assumptions uh, about you know, math. I, it's so much of a problem for girls in general, the assumption that math and science is not our thing. And then I think for TS girls, it's even more. And I think to look at that here in this meeting, you know, I tell people, okay, on our board, you know, we now have three physicians, an accountant, an attorney, you know, okay, you tell me we can't do math. Um, 
Yeah, and it, it may not be everybody's strength, but um, I, I think not necessarily making those assumptions is very important. And that's not to say that you don't have to be realistic, uh, because you do. Um, and you don't want to let things, you know, frustration get, you know, to a point that it's really becoming a barrier. But I think, you know, going ahead and, and pushing, you know, at least, a, you know, to a certain degree, I think is important. Um, I first discovered the TSSUS um, online um, back when I was in medical school, which was fairly early in the internet. Uh, it was kind of as I was learning to use the internet, that, hey, let's just see what's there by Inter Turner Syndrome. Um, I sort of stayed on the periphery the first few years, I think it's pretty common. Um, and then went to my first conference, let's see, that was Salt Lake, so that was 2001, I think, um, and that was right after 9-11, um, and, you know, just, I had already been to some local things in Houston at that point, but just watching, I mean, the thing that blows me away is not only the opportunity for me to socialize with other people that I've now come to realize, you know, how many things we have in common and how special it is to interact. The thing that blows me away is to watch the girls and what that would have meant to me as a child uh, growing up with Turner Syndrome. And that, that to me is what this organization is about. Uh, and it just, you know, the conference like this and at our local conference we have in Akron, uh, you know, that's, I just love to watch them. Delightful to watch running around. I um, became president elect um, in 2005. Um, I had just moved to Akron at that time, just finished my fellowship. Um, you know, I had wanted to get more involved. And that was a big step up because I hadn't been on the board at all before then, but things were kind of shaken up at the board level at that time. And so there was an, an opening that they needed to fill, and I was honored to be asked. Confirmed at the conference in Kansas City. Uh, it was an experience. Uh, the first year or so, I think things were sh shaking up and a little rocky, but it's been amazing to watch just over those last few years how far things have come. I would like to see our um, involvement on the professional level really step up. I see, um, you know, a lot of other organizations like us that are much more involved, uh, both at the research level and really being leaders in the clinical. I think our CME um, event that we have here and that we had last year has been a huge step in that. We have a one-day event. This year was our fourth year. Um, we have it, um, we've had it in January. Um, how we ended up doing a conference in January in Akron, Ohio, I don't know. Uh, but somehow we got started having it in January. Um, this year we put it off until the end of February and we still had a snowstorm, so <laughs> it's going to happen anyway, but um, it has steadily increased. Um, we have informational talks. Um, this year we went to having more unstructured time, which I think worked well, too. Uh, but similar kinds of topics to what we have here, just a little bit shorter. More involving people locally in our area. It's helped us kind of build our team um, as our clinic kind of takes shape. We've got a lot of those specialists involved. We also bring in, we brought in Dr. Bondi one year, we brought in Dr. Mooney one year. Um, so we've also brought in the people from outside that's really generated a lot of excitement. Um, but we've got a core group now. We had 120 people this February. Um, so it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's very much like here, just a little smaller scale. The girls, actually, the last several years we've had kind of um, team and confidence building programs you know, for young people that have, have come in, uh, called Adventure Plus, uh, that have come in and done activities with the girls. And they've had a great time. We had this last year, we had an natatorium, which includes a pool uh, complex, even with some water slides. And so we did the programming in the morning and then just free time in the afternoon that people could get tickets to go in there. And of course, the girls were running around and having all sorts of fun. We uh, met at church. Uh, we had met, actually I knew his mom better than him first because she was active in book group and women's circle and a couple of things that I was a member of at church early on. Uh, 
And then one day after church, um, he comes up to me. I, I'd met him at some other events. He comes up to me and says, yeah, uh, my family goes to the Nutcracker, um, and we have an extra ticket. My dad said I should ask you. <laughs> and um, so we decided to go, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and it sort of started from there. Actually, it was interesting because fairly early in my time in Akron, uh, right about the time we started dating, the hospital in one of their, in, well, community level publications did a little one-page spread on me, talking about my experience with Turner Simmons. Um, I had not thought about the fact that it was going out to the community enough that his mom was a nurse practitioner. She got it, and she passed it on to him. And so we talked about it very frankly from from the get-go, and I think that's been really good for our relationship um, to be able to know that. I mean, I think about the number of women that work so hard and, and you know, couples that spend so much time and money and frustration, you know, doing IVF or just trying to get pregnant in general. Um, and to have known from the beginning, okay, this is what we have to expect, and really being on the same page, um, 